Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 335. Uh, each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions uh, community on Google+. Plus. Uh, no, no, we don't. Not anymore. Um, it's only the Dumb SEO Questions group on uh, Facebook. Okay, with us tonight we have Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim um, is uh, a director of onlineownership.com. Um, he resides about 100 miles north of London uh, in, and uh, he's a, a Google product expert uh, in the um, Google My Business community. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's also a Google product expert uh, um, in the uh, AdSense uh, community. And uh, he uh, is uh, based in Wimbledon. Um, so it's just um, this side of, of um, the, uh, this side of the world. All right, let's. Um, have a look at um, our first question. Let's hope it answers shortly. Uh, Cassie Richardson asks the question. Question one, it's number one on our run list. On It's titled Local Search Predictions. Um, Cassie said, I'm curious. What are some predictions you all have for where local search is headed in the next few years? Well, I think there's going to certainly be <coughs> uh, less visibility for um, less visibility for local businesses um, organically. Um, we've already seen that this year uh, in uh, the June June update. Some um, search queries. Uh, removed all actual local businesses from it, um, uh, specifically airport, trans airport transfers uh, in the UK, just decimated that. Uh, literally overnight, every single local business was removed organically, replaced by big um, comparison sites. So certainly that, you know, th there is the potential for that to increase. Um, I think Google also with the knowledge panel for local businesses is trying to become um, more of a home page um, for businesses. You can literally find all the information you need on the knowledge panel about a business without actually having to click through to the business itself, the website. Um, I think in GMB, you're going to look at some form of paid version. Um, Specifically, I think that with the with the running out now of product inventory in uh, business listings, where where small merchants now, individual small businesses, can add uh, products, um, the price description, image. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that then got fed into the merchant feed side of things. And you would then be able to use those within ads. Uh, so that'll be the first one. But then I think that you will also then be able to bid on categories. And essentially, if you're not displaying ads, then if somebody has highlighted a business and you fall into it, then all of a sudden you will have another business displaying their product on your knowledge panel. We already see this happening for Groupon ads, um, um, Grubhub, DoorDash, uh, we already see this happening. So it's 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 there, it's happening. So that's what I see is going to happen. Um, yeah, the good old days of having your business listing and, you know, having a good old merry time with it, I think is coming to a total end. Um, you're going to have to pay for the privilege soon. Good one, Tim. All right. 
Um, I, I think um, um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, Masataki, but did you want to add anything to that? No, not really. I think Tim's the expert, and uh, I agree with his um, assessment. Yeah, me too. Good on you, Mesa. All right, let's um, go to the next on our run list. Number two, it's titled Making Internal Links Bold from Saurab Rawat. Um, he, he wants to know if making internal links bold that will help in ranking. Dave Elliott said no. That should have been enough, but Saurab said, uh, have you tried it? Um, and... Uh, Michael Martinez said um, he noticed no impact. Of course, he he would have tried it 20 years ago. Well, the thing is, um, how do you measure something like that? Because you're internally linking anyway. So how do you measure the internal link versus whether that internal link is bold or not? Like, like how? You would have... It, do you know what I mean? Uh, I'm like, because you wouldn't be able to test it on the exact, you know, it wouldn't be a clean test. You wouldn't be able to test uh, either or. Uh, it's just ridiculous. But um, in my CSS, I do bold my um, um, links, whether they be internal or external. Uh, that, and that's purely for a user you know, for a user, they can clearly see that that is bolded, that I can click on that. But, you know, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, just just think about what you're asking, mate. And then you said in another one, like, how do you know? Have you tested? Well, how the hell do you? Are you going to literally go and bold all your internal linking, wait until Googlebot has recrawled every single one of those pages with internal linking on it. Assess, then go through all those pages again, remove the bold, wait till Googlebot has recrawled all of them. And mind you, if you've got some deep internal pages that are, you know, internally linking, that could be months. You know, I mean, like literally just think what you're asking. I just, it's, I just, for a user perspective, go for it. But I mean, yeah, I'd, yeah. I mean, I just like for me that would just be a complete and utter waste of time. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think you know if you're going to make certain text or certain types of text bold, then that sh there should be a good reason for doing so. And you know making sure that things stand out is a good perhaps a good reason you know, i can see that happening um but i doubt it would have much of an effect and you know it might be a bit confusing to users if you're using bold text for internal and normal text for external for example then you say you know then you're giving um, mixed signals as to what the you know whether something is a link or not, if that makes sense. And additionally, you might want to think about the accessibility issue, and you know is the link clear to everyone who come who visits the page. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, will we move on from this one, Mesa? Yeah, why not? Okay. Number three um, of 17 questions to get through tonight. Uh, number three is trying to get ranking for my city. From Jason Chong, he said, so I have my business website. It's a local service business. I mostly sit in the three-pack for uh, main keywords. Uh, 
brackets acupuncture dash Chinese medicine um, for my suburb, Brunswick. Uh, that must be uh, Australia. Um, and uh, around two or three inorganic for the local suburb. Uh, competitors have suburb and keyword in their titles wherever I, I have a, a branded uh, business name. Um, he said, uh, I have also been working on trying to get ranking for my city, Melbourne. Um, slowly um, uh, crawling up. Um, oh, what have I done wrong here? Let me just do, pull that down. Okay, slowly crawling up a little for the two main keywords, hitting page three, four on organic. That was enough to send me to sleep, but uh, Jason. Um, and um, and that, though I seem to make an appearance on page one for one of them today, we'll see how long that lasts. I'm nowhere to be seen in the local pack, even when scrolling 80 deep for the city. What am, what am I missing to get into this pack too? I have uh, I had thought that organic ranking for that keyword would at least uh, raise an appearance. Sorry for the bad read, guys. I, I, I didn't quite get it. Yeah. Okay. So there's a couple of things. So firstly, Melbourne is the entire city, and I'm assuming Brunswick is a suburb in Melbourne. Correct. So. What you're going to need to firstly do is just see what Google sees as Melbourne. So when you type in Chinese acupuncture Melbourne, um, where is it situating it? Are you anywhere near that radius, that cluster of pins that they highlight? Uh, because that is what they deem as, you know, um, Melbourne centric. Um, and I'm assuming there would be somewhere near the CBD in that sense. Um, so that's your first issue is location. Location is the most, is, is one of the biggest things. You know, if you want to appear in Melbourne, ideally you want to be located in Melbourne, um, in Melbourne itself. Um, the other thing you could do is you could structure your websites a little bit in the sense that you, your homepage would then read I don't know what whatever your brand name is brand name hyphen chinese acupuncture and then in um where, where it, well, I've, I've already oh brunswick melbourne right so now you're including that in your title so now you have made your home page and your site i am in brunswick melbourne um you should ideally have your address uh in the footer of your site um which will include you know brunswick melbourne and then postcode uh that should be included in your structured data and melbourne would be in your city in your locale in your structured data um that address that you use should be built in your local citation should also include brunswick melbourne and then your um zip code or your postcode so that now you're reinforcing across the board that yes i'm in brunswick but i am in the i will say i'm the greater melbourne um perhaps somewhere on your home page depending on what that looks like you would also have serving the city of melbourne or you know we're based in based in brunswick serving serving uh, serving patients throughout melbourne you know something like that towards the bottom of the, the page um possibly allowing them to say yes we're located in brunswick this is our address this is how we're you know blah 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 blah. opening hours closing times um easily accessible um from melbourne via this road a one and then give some directions also accessible from south melbourne or whatever and pick pick one of the main arteries in there and then you can give a bit of bit of um, you know description to that, uh, giving giving Google a better understanding of of where you are and actually where you would serve or where your customers would likely to come from. <coughs> For your internal service pages, 
Um, you were saying your brand name. Now, for an internal service page, I don't know, let's say you are, uh, I don't know, I don't know anything about, um, uh, I don't know, let's just say it's X product or a service is a half hour thing or whatever. Um, it would be the, the, the service name. I would typically do the service name, then my locale, you know, in, and then my brand name. I would always have your brand name in because if you don't have that in Google, tries to insert it. Um, but I would have on an internal page, I would have that page, that keyword, that service first. Uh, and then especially if you're serving locally, you can say in Brunswick, Melbourne, and then hyphen and finish off with your brand name. That's typically the way I do them. You know, everyone's different, but that's typically the way I do it. Brand name and the very beginning on your homepage, but then internally it's at the end because you want your service first. Um, and because you only serve those that area, yeah, add it in. And you might as well, you know, add in. I don't know how long your brand name is. So, you know, it might be cut off slightly depending on how long the service is, the service name, you know, um, in terms of uh, character length. Um, but the other question is, is, you know, be realistic. I, I, I obviously don't know where, where you are from, from Melbourne, CBD in that sense. Um, it may be more logical to target the next the next uh, suburb or surrounding suburbs rather than Melbourne itself. Um, because someone in the CBD of Melbourne, like if you search uh, for Melbourne, it's going to give you stuff in the CBD. You could be, I don't, uh, look, I honestly don't know, you could be 40 minutes away. I don't know. Will someone drive 40 minutes for some, for some, for some, you know, occupy, I, I, I don't know. It's your customer. You, you should, should, should know them. So what I'm trying to say is, really think about would someone actually drive that far um if you are far would it not be better than to target surrounding suburbs because that's you know more of your target market um than actually melbourne but you know have a look at it and and then see so yeah there's a couple of couple of things there to to sort of get you going in terms of thinking melbourne also, I would start looking at maybe some more Melbourne-centric um, content. So, did he did he say Chinese acupuncture? Yes, yeah. this acupuncture. Okay, so start providing a bit of content. Um, I'm guessing if somebody wants Chinese acupuncture, somebody's also looking for um, shops that do Chinese herbal remedies, right? So, create a, create a resource for Melbourne. Melbourne's, you know, create a resource, list every single one. You can, you know, name, address, telephone number, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I typically wouldn't link to them. I would then link to their local pack, their, their actual business page. Um, and create a resource. Then also create your own map for that and embed it on the page. Create a resource for it. You know, yeah, I do Chinese acupuncture. But guys, hey, if you want anything to do, like, like yeah, oh, here's herbal medicine source. Chinese um, grocery stores. I mean, look, the list is endless. Start creating a resource around everything, but that resource then starts really ramming home addresses within Melbourne um, and things like that that you that you that you're listing that you're associating with all Chinese kind of you know topic wise. Uh, so start thinking about that. Um, that can really give you a good old boost in terms of Melbourne centric stuff. And it can bring you in a fair, fair amount of traffic also. Fantastic, Tim. Excellent. It's, um, we move on to the next one, Messer. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Okay, let's look at this from Karina Kumikova. It's titled Robots Text and Indexation Question. Um, she said that the content of the robot's text file looks like this, but the homepage returns no information is available for this site uh, in search engine results pages. What else uh, can uh, cause this
Let's see, so there's a um, is that a typo in in a uh, thing? So what I, th I, I I'm just uh, having a look at uh, the answers from the guy. And by the way, I must point out people like Michael Martinez uh, and Richard Hearn, who um, answer questions through the week. It's really appreciated. Um, but um, on her, um, on, on Karina's um, robots text, I. I it's missing a T um, in um, the um, robots text file user agent. And I think the first letter, and it's, it's important, um, the first letter has to be capitalized. Um, yeah, crazy stuff. Um, Richard Hearn said, um, Richard was saying basically check your chicken if there's no index in your in your head. Yeah, because WordPress, if somebody has clicked, you know, on there, don't be found, it inserts it into your it inserts it on page. Yeah. I, I see what he said. Yeah, I understand now. Okay. Yeah. So if, um, what happens if there is a robots txt file, and there's a spelling mistake? Well, hasn't Google this last week or so been ramming home that there is specific that they've brought out specific documentation for robots txt um, and they for example now they will not be they will not be honoring no index in robots txt um, if you like a page that you've no index in robots txt um, you need to put it in the meta of that page um, so there's a whole lot been going on about it this, i think the last week possibly last week also um so there's a whole big thing on day trying to make a, a worldwide standard conformity for it yeah All right, let's um, call that an answer for Karina. I, Karina, if, if it's not, uh, please ask uh, um, for clarification. We'll be glad to follow up again. All right, uh, next one uh, is from Paul Karalias. It's maintaining ranking after moving to a new domain. Uh, Paul said, is it possible to move a site to a new domain and maintain the ranking? Mm, no, you're always going to have um, you're always going to have slight dips. Um, you know, you, you can you can obviously your you make sure that every single page redirects properly, one hundred percent to to the others. But you, there's always going to be a slight dip. You know. Depending on the age of the site, it's probably had a lot of mentions, brands. You know, Google does, doesn't always essentially work just on like a link to a site, telling it, well, that site's all right. You know, it's, it's think of it more as, a, as an online, you know, like reputation also. I mean, even if you've got your entire migration perfect, I think there will be a slight dip, um, especially if the site is a very large site you're going to have a delay you know you're still going to have one 
that's still live. The second one's been indexed. Um, you can also mitigate that by doing canonicals on the one and then, you know, launching the other. You know, there's all sorts of variations to it. But no, you, you, you're, I mean, if it's a very competitive market space, I don't think a query that was on position one is going to stay position one. It more than likely, um, you know, drop down to two or three. Um, worst case scenario, not even on there. But I, no, I don't. I don't honestly believe that a different domain to another domain. Um, no, I don't see it. You can minimize it, but certainly, I don't think you're ever going to maintain. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right. Um, I think uh, that covers it for Paul. And also notice uh, that uh, Scott Clark and uh, many others have uh, assisted on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group through the week. Um, let's go to the next. This is another one from Karina Kumakova. Um, she says, I have five duplicate domains. A question to tech specialists out there. A client has five duplicate domains with index pages from each of them. And basically, it uh, looks like this. Uh, dash dupe dash domain minus one. About 12,000 results. No referring domains. I, I don't know what this means. Um, I must be getting old. Um, domain two, about six of me, no, no referring domains. Um, oh. uh, Tim, did, did you have any idea what, what I'm supposed to be reading here? Yeah, and so, um, so hang on. What she hasn't answered is what are those pages on there? So, like the one had 23,000, this last one on duplicate five had 500 and something. What are those pages? Like, yeah, they might have duplicate domains, but I want to know what those pages were. Are they all exact copies across domains? And it's just that some haven't been indexed and some have been indexed? Like, you've said the domains, you know, the minus one, the minus two, the minus three, the minus four. But I want to know what those pages are. Do you mean those are all also internally duplic duplicate? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, top of my head, like George just said, just no index, follow them. Um, um, I wonder if you could, well, no, you, you could robots TXT him. Um, that would be a thing, but another a quick way with like George said, is just, um, no follow, no index. Uh, I'm just trying to think. No, I think I would agree with um, Michael Martinez. It, yeah. Yes. Cause something is automatically creating it. Um, so you still don't want to be creating pages that Googlebot's still going to have to want, want to try and follow, isn't it? No. Well, if it's already there, what you want is canonicalize it to yeah. the domains. Yeah. I'd agree with yeah. that. But what I'm saying is how were these created? If these are five things which are exactly duplicate, if you're on your main domain, you're adding another page, a piece of content, is it adding to these? What I'm saying is how were these five created and are they automatically updating when the main domain is updated? Yeah, I mean, it's strange, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. So I would, uh, yeah, do you know what I mean? Canonicalize them, but I would really recommend trying to find a reason behind this because if Google is used to crawling these, which it certainly is, like you say, you know, they found 23 on the other and a couple of thousand the other and then 100 and 500 blah 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 it's certainly crawling them and ultimately it's got used to that pattern of crawling them now it's going to have to get used to you know honoring the canonical 
But what I'm saying is I, I really think you need to find out why it's regenerating or recreating. I would rather try and find that and turn it off. Yeah, definitely. I think that that would be the first thing to do. Why are mm. duplicate domains being created and, you know, five times, as I understand, yeah. Or, yeah. or four times? No, no, five times, isn't it? Because they, there's one domain and then five duplicates. And if it's being auto-generated, then you, know, you do have an issue. And I'm not so sure if there's an issue with um, perhaps CDN here. Um, I'm not 100% sure what Route 53 redirection means in this in 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 this instance. So I don't use. AWS, I don't know. But in, is the CDN creating duplicate domains? Could that happen? I don't know. I know this, um, just typing. Uh... Hello to uh, Micah. Um, we've been joined by Micah Fisher Kirshner, uh, Director of uh, SEO at uh, Turn River Capital and President of the Meetup Group um, close to Silicon Valley. What's the name of it, Micah? BayAreaSearch.org. Okay. Yeah. Uh um, I think I wouldn't do three. I wouldn't recommend moving these from search results by um, no indexing. I, I would definitely um, I would definitely follow Michael Martinez's suggestion and canonicalize. Because then what you have is if you block by Roberts TXT or um the uh, on on page that's going to cause a bit more of an issue i think yeah i see david rosam has just joined us too Okay. Yeah. Look, um, I, I think I think you're absolutely right, uh, Masataki. Yeah, can, can, canonicalization uh, is 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 um, it's, it seems to be that the medicine for this. Um, let's move on to the next. It's uh, uh, number seven on our run list uh, on who should be the author. Um, and uh, Matthias uh, said uh, any number of experts weigh in on various blog posts which are then written by a writer who is listed as the author of the page. The experts who supplied the info or the writer or all. Keep in mind that the writer doesn't have accreditation in the field that we'd like to show, uh, of, show off on author pages. The experts who aren't writing the final copy do, though. I mean, I guess it just depends on how, what's standard in the in the the booking essay publishing space. You know, is it the final person who's doing all the writing is defined as the author? And then are you, you know, quoting the other folks and providing contributing credit um, or, or listed as contributors? Um, I, you know, I would kind of look into that general space. 
uh, to get kind of the inspiration of how that setup should be. So, yeah. Okay, let's move on to number eight on our run list. Um, it's um, from AJM Verma. It's titled Mobile Ranking and Desktop Ranking. He said, I have a four months old website. It is a local business. I've been noticing a trend here that there is a huge difference between its mobile ranking and desktop ranking. Um, it ranks high on mobile, but low on desktop. The difference is as high as 20 spots. Is it normal or do I need uh, optimization for desktop? Please advise, thanks. So, yeah, there, there can be big differences. Uh, depends what you're using to check it, firstly. Um, mobile also tends to serve try a lot more sort of proximity if you especially if you're a local business then desktop uh, desktop tends to pick a uh, an IP and you can be freaking miles away rather than than mobile so it, it all depends on what you're looking at you know um, does most of your business come what what where does your business come from um, I would try and ascertain that first are most of your customers using desktop or most of your customers using mobile uh, is it a local business? Um, you're going to need to try and break that down and factor into that. Um, and also just remember that, um, yeah, so I would be worried if your desktop was outperforming your mobile because, uh, well, it, it, I think you need to figure out where your customers are searching from. So, uh, and, I'll, and I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of like a lot of um, my clients that have quite expensive uh, products hardly 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 have actual purchases via mobile I mean literally nothing uh, people are still very cautious about purchasing with mobile personally I don't um, uh, I don't purchase via mobile, um, but especially when you're talking, you know, in the tens and thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds, uh, I've literally only ever seen one purchase made in mobile. Um, but, you know, it, uh, I suppose it's country to country. Uh, I think you need to understand w what your business is, what the customers are most likely doing. I would actually even start asking them. Um, yeah, and then from there, decide on what you're going to be working through. Yeah. All right, let's um, move on to number nine on our run list. Um, could somebody post the um, um, run list URL with the um, uh, post ID? Uh, sorry, the PID, the PID number um, the, on the ASPX file. Um, all right. Um, he's, it's a question from AJM Verma, another one. Um, do geotagged images help? Um, your ranking? Um, no. No, they don't. And yeah, I've I've tested it. No, um, it doesn't. And I would wouldn't even you know if you've got a lot of images, I just literally wouldn't waste my time on it. Far better things to do. Yeah. Um, I would certainly make sure that my file name on my image is correct, you know, that it contains whatever the case may be. And also I'd be, I'm using, you know, a title in it and alt text to properly describe the image. Um, 
you know, if it's a picture of the outside of the business and the building that it's in, you know, your alt text is going to say that this is X, Y, Z business located within this building on, you know, um, but as in geotagging, no, I've run, I ran that when everybody was talking it like 10 years ago, I ran it, tried it. Uh, no, there's literally, you know, uh, it won't go from position two to one. No just on images. Excellent, Tim, thank you. We'll wrap that one up and um, move on to number 10 on our run list. It's from Neil Cheeseman. It's titled, Viewing Traffic from Featured Snippets. He said, is it possible to view the traffic from featured snippets to your own domain? And if so, how? Um, without having to pay. Everybody wants to know without having to pay. Right, well, I can say that Michael Martin has said, no, it is not possible to do this. If you go looking, you'll find some blog posts that suggest a way to compare Google Search Console data to third-party ranking report data. Such analytical, me uh, analytical methods are uh, amateurish and useless. Uh, until such time as the search engines break out featured snippet uh, performance data, it doesn't exist and cannot be estimated. So, yeah, that's not quite accurate. Um, all right, first off, um, you know, David below that is, is correct. There used to be a GA filter. It was in beta uh, in Google Search Console, and that was taken away. Um, but you can develop a way to estimate it. Um, it's just not the easiest thing. Uh, you can essentially do kind of pre-post. Um, so if you know what kind of your traffic is and your ranking for said term, and then you now have a featured snippet with your ranking at the same term and the new featured snippet in the you know, zero spot, you can kind of get an estimate of what the traffic is from that specific featured snippet. Um, that's the, pretty much the only way you're going to be kind of you're going to be able to guesstimate the amount of traffic there. Uh, outside of that, there is no accurate or exact tool or data that Google will give on feature snippets, unfortunately. Thank you, Micah. Okay, let's go to number. 11 on our run list uh, from Saurabh Rowat. Does Google see author reputation and how can Google see this? Well, if an author has said he's an author of an article and you're using structured data markup, you're telling Google who the author is. Equally, you don't even need structured data markup because typically if he's writing for a particular site, you know, the author is in the exact same place all the time um, and they'll just, you know, uh, learn and read from it. Um, yeah, as for doing they see, see it, I think they certainly see a site's reputation. Um, and we saw that in the recent June thing when a particular medical site, which is more on, oh God, I wish I remember the name. It's more on the alternative medicine type thing, just absolutely died in the, in the results. Um, so we certainly know that a reputation based upon domain is looked at and can be affected. I don't necessarily know about an author. So let's take it this way. Let's say you've got a domain, um, whatever, whatever genre, whatever niche, um, and you've got 10 authors writing for that, whether it be a newspaper or a gazette or a business, whatever. 
do they, f and this is the thing about the author, do they favor one which is more reputable, an author in terms of maybe he's produced more, maybe he won a journalism award or something, over another author that produces the same, let's say, type of content, so maybe a different niche set in within that organization, would, it, would they favor it, you see? So I certainly think they understand it on a domain level. From a, from an author, would they then not? Would they then say this author's reputation is not so great, so I'm not going to feature this article as well? I don't think so. Um, that's yeah, that's my personal thoughts. I think domain, yes. Specific author broken down onto a site, not so much. Thank you, Tim. If uh, nobody else has anything to add, we'll go to number uh, 12 on our run list. Yeah, my, my, my thought, my immediate thought is how would, um, how would this be, be measured? Um, how, how would that reputation be measured? What, what part of, uh, uh, how would that be attached to whatever metadata or, uh, or identity the um, the um, the guy or the, the woman would have. So I'm not sure that that there's a there's a there's a something that that represents um, author um, author reputation. But uh, again, just my thoughts. Yeah, I think I think it's more likely to be site based than sort of individual based, if that makes sense. Like mm. you pointed out, um, you know, if a website has a dubious reputation, um, then the, such site may be seen as less credible by search engines whoever writes for that or whoever purports to write for that site. Um, you know, you could always have a degree from a degree mill and say you're a doctor in whatever, and then write uh, an article. And then you could put up many different credentials, but that doesn't necessarily mean that person is credible or reputable. So I think I think it is much more likely to be site based. Yes, it's an interesting thing. You know, I, I, it's, it's such a shame that uh, Google Plus has uh, been you know, gone by the wayside and uh, um, that authorship uh, thing um, died and, you know, the, the profile. I mean, what a wonderful thing for the web it would have been if Google had followed through. Anyway, let's go to the next. Number 12 on our run list from Ben Williams, two schemas on one page. Um, he said, when doing schema markup, can I mark up my homepage for organization and also mark it up for local business? Well, local business falls under organization. So just stick to local business, uh, simple as. Um, however, if you have multiple locations, whether that be two stores, three, four, 10, 20, then it technically you can have your organization running site-wide whilst the actual location-based stores then have local business data attached to them. Or you could then sometimes, which I don't like, is you could actually fold them like the two, three, four, five, ten stores, all under the one main organization having that having that running. 
that doesn't sit really well with me. Um, I would prefer, you know, organization site wide and then the actual individual uh, pages for those locations, those fall under local business, which then falls under the, the organization. But if you're a single business, you don't need the organization. You're a local business because it already falls under organization. Right, Tim. Um, ben actually posted a follow-up um, in the comments uh, to this one. I don't know if it um, would affect your answer to this or not, but I'll, I'll just no, read. No, yeah. So I'm saying, so I know he's saying, yeah, but what about the schema? There's no marker for opening hours. Well, actually, technically there is, because if you follow the whole thing for organization, you would add your local business within that. So it would say organization, uh, domain, name, um, same as, um, CEO, da -da 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 -da. and then it would still follow on with local business, name, local business, URL, um, opening hours, address. Um, you know, you can add in same as, you can add in hazmat. That would all fall in. If you're using organization top level, you would then follow it all the way through and still add local business. What I'm saying is you don't need to do that. If you're a single business, you don't need all that crap. Just use local business because it still falls within that structure anyway. And that's where your hours, your, your opening hours, your addresses, your hazmat, um, you know, if you want to add your geo coordinates, if you want to add, uh, and if it's a restaurant, you can add your freaking menu within that. You can add your reservation, ordering, all within the local business, right? You don't need to use the organization. Only time I would use organization if there are more than one business within that brand, in that organization. Then you, you can have organization running site-wide, but because you've already said open hours within organization, you're already telling me that this is a single business. So don't use organization, use local business. Excellent, Tim. All right, so let's move to the next. All right, unlucky for some, number 13 from Jason Chong. Um, link structure for local SEO. Uh, he said, for local SEO purposes, is the website structure um, website dash slash uh, location slash um, service number? viewed less favorably than website slash surface hyphen location. Well, I would typically have service and then location because your service is your bread and butter. Um, but I still wouldn't even do it that way. Um, I would have your, let's see, so you've got, because ultimately you're gonna be, I don't know, let's say you've got 10 locations and all 10 of them offer the same service, right? That means you're gonna have to have 10 pages of that same service across 10 locations, right? And then you've got another one, which is going to be the same across 10, across, it makes no sense. So I typically would list my locations uh, individually. And on those location pages, I would offer to say which services that location provides and then have your services separate. Um, but yeah, you know, it's entirely up to you. But if I was going down that road, I would say, um, uh, because hang on your location yeah I, yeah no, actually i might no i'd probably go location service uh, you know the great scheme of things i doubt it's going to make that much of a difference uh, pro <sighs> See, this is the thing. People typically don't, because people have become so 
people typically don't add in a location anymore because they know that Google's going to return that service to them. That's why I actually don't know. I don't think I, I don't know if either is going to make that much of a difference. Service slash location or location slash service. No, I honestly don't. Yeah. But I might, yeah. I'd probably go service. Service is your business. Service is your business. That is your actual service you provide. Okay, so I would say if you were going to go down the road, service forward slash location. Um, but it still doesn't make sense because, you know, you're still duplicating 10 freaking service pages for each location if you've got 10 locations. Yeah. Yeah, I feel your pain, Tim. It's tricky. Um, any 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 additions to this one? Number fourteen on our run list uh, is from Nesmun Nahar. Um, it's titled June Google Core Update. Um, Nesmun wants to know: Is anyone noticing a change in traffic after the June Google Core Update? Uh, um bracket seems it's still rolling out no i didn't have anything erratic i just said the usual fluctuations up and down um <coughs> i had a big one in local especially with the search query airport transfers because google and their wisdom removed all local businesses from that and replaced it with big large quote um uh estimate quote sites um so they removed all local businesses from that um ironically the one medical business everyone shouted that medical sites got slammed ironically this time around my one medical business sailed through like you know nothing so out of this actual one the only one of my in fact hotels also recovered quite nicely on some search queries um so the only one i would say for me was no overall i never noticed anything and i even had a medical style business um except for in the in with with taxis um that was that was quite bad that that hit them pretty hard um but that was google uh, that, that would literally remove local businesses from the first two three pages so um, that was Google in itself that like no other business could could win or lose on that everyone lost so Yep, what one of my clients um, got knocked back quite badly um, But uh, it's bounded back um, Usual stuff um, Don't panic Wait for it to come back and it did so yeah so I, I guess yes it's erratic um google s stirs the pot and then everything floats back to the surface again cool all right number 15 on our run list is um from zawa kamal um it's titled optimizing your author page um he says, how to best optimize your author page? I usually turn them off from Yoast, but it causes a 301 redirect on literally all the blog posts. I don't have anything to write in author details, um, i.e. Uh, image, bio, etc. What should I do? Any uh, recommendations? Um, well, so for me personally, on mine, mine redirects to the about us page for the business because i am online ownership and online ownership is me um i don't need to buy an author bio it would just be duplicating stuff it's literally about me because i talk about myself the business who i am 
you know, and how the business grows and et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I do with mine. Um, yeah. Um, so what I'd like to kind of do for an author page, if I can um, <clears throat> spend time on it, is essentially um, provide kind of name, photo, position, um, or job title or whatever that may be. Uh, and then usually a quick blurb about who they are, links off to various credential sites, be it Twitter, references from other major organizations. Um, and then underneath that is kind of the standard like list of articles they've written. Um, I find that to be kind of the useful way of giving uh, the information that's needed. Um, and that's only in the case of if I feel that um, the author, having separate author pages is useful enough versus having it uh, noted in the at the end of the article itself, uh, depending on kind of your direction of that. That's generally the way that I, I will try to look at having uh, an author page. So. Thank you, Micah. All right, uh, let's um, move on to number 16 from Jason Chong, the keyword term near me. Um, for a service-based business, the keyword term including near me has a lot of searches. How best to incorporate that into the text in a natural manner? I can come up with service near you uh, but not quite sure how to exact match uh, if that is even important. Okay, so, so typically you don't have to add in near me <laughs> to be found from near me. And this goes back to the original one and you were talking about, you know, where you were, et cetera, and I was saying start creating uh, content around your topic. Your topic is Chinese acupuncture. So start creating stuff around, start creating a resource. And part of my methodology in that was you are going to include addresses for Chinese um, sh shops, Chinese uh, herbal medicine stores, Chinese whatever, you know, pharmacies, blah, 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 create these pages. In creating these pages, you're also giving a little name, just a brief description, um, and an address and a link to maps. And now you're starting to build up all of this kind of stuff that Google is starting to understand and understand where you are in this whole big city scheme of things. You don't need to physically type in near me. Um, I guess you could probably, if you really wanted to start inserting near me, uh, uh, maybe on your contact page, you could start, uh, you know, add directions, stuff like that. Um, but you don't need to add in like a page with near me in the title or in like an H1 or something like that. It's, it's just, it I don't just know doesn't how long, work. I don't know how long ago that was, but I do know that a number of other SEOs have noted that they will rank better if they put in the phrase, nonetheless, that Google still isn't sufficiently good enough to de-emphasize that. But if you do have that in, in the, some important parts, it does actually still help them rank a bit better. But I don't play in the local side, so I'm just noting yeah. that I've seen a few others have as well noted that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, typically I think organic it looks freaking stupid saying, oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, your title is Chinese yeah. acupuncturist near me yeah. in, in Melbourne. I mean, it's like, you know, people in that instance, when they're searching it, nine times out of ten, they go directly onto the maps. And near me will position you organically, a page will position that page Firstly, I said it looks stupid. I, that's mm -hmm. me personally. It just looks stupid. But when someone is looking for that, they nine times out of ten searching or coming from or going straight to the maps, right? They 
they, they query it, they see it, they, and they don't typically search near me. It just queries it. So they start going Chinese acupuncture and it automatically, and then you can click near me. I doubt anyone's ever searched near me. Um, and then it, they, they typically go to maps. Now, your near me page that you created doesn't influence your maps. You might do organically if someone physically searches that, but not your maps. So that's why I said you need to start thinking about the bigger picture in terms of you, your content, what's around you, and where your customers uh, are traveling from and how far they prepare to travel to. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's uh, move on to number 17 on our run list from another one from Jason Chong. Um, Google Map Embed and Stacking. Um, he said Google Map Embeds, Google Custom Maps, Google Map Stacking, etc. I am finding these services to help with local SEO. I'm hoping for some impartial information around these. Are they useful? Are they dangerous? Are they likely to be penalized by Google? Thanks. Jason, I don't know what the hell you're reading, mate. Whatever you're reading, stay away. Okay. So you can test this out yourself. It's so quick and easy. In your account, your Google account, go into maps, go into your, your contributions, go down maps, and then you can create your own map, right? And I, so just create one for yourself very quickly. Pick a pick um, a page, a, a suburb or whatever that's like, I don't know, two roads down from you or whatever the case may be. And then just chuck your business where it is, obviously, and then go and create the same ridiculous business, your business, this map stacking bollocks. Go and create essentially fake businesses completely surrounding you down that one street. Chuck it on your, chuck it on your page, embed it, and then let's see what happens. So essentially, I'm saying to you, nothing happens. It's just a load of twaddle, a complete load of twaddle. Firstly, it's in a map. Then secondary, you know, do you honestly think Google doesn't realize that, oh, look, I've got, I've got my, my business there, and now I'm adding my freaking business completely surrounded in all these different areas. Then I create another map linking to that one with, like, my business is also miraculously in 700 different locations. And then again, I've got another one linking to that one, which is the same again, got another 700. Come on, mate. Like, really? So you can test this out yourself. Go and create one. Take you two minutes. Embed it on your site. You know, you can even create a blog post, like something where you can literally test it, like create it as, you know, X Street Chinese acupuncture. Create it as a blog post. Put some content on it. Chuck your map on there. See how well you do. Thank you, Tim. All right. Um, I think we are at the time. Yes, it is. Thank you for watching time. Um, we've answered all of the questions asked um, a few weeks ago um, on uh, the dumb uh, SEO questions Facebook group. We intend to catch up um, uh, by next week um, after a few uh, intermissions. All right, I thank um, people like Tim Kappa, um, Micah Fisher Kirshner, um, Masataki Wasa, and David Rosam for um, fronting up uh, this week and. Uh, um, most weeks uh, to answer questions um, asked uh, on, on the uh, um, Dharma SEO Questions Facebook group. And I think um, uh, people like uh, Stockbridge Trustlow, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Martinez, um, Richard Hearn, uh, Michael Stricker, um, the, the assistance uh, that they give uh, our group um, through the week is invaluable and much appreciated. We'll be back at the same time next week um, to do uh, this um, all again. 
Uh, but for now, uh, it's um, good.